The missing link in mix, alpha imaging and function testing. I can't be with you at this time because I was just diagnosed with corona. I'm doing well, but not well enough to be with you. First, I want to talk about the location of primary resistance to outflow. Second, the proximal distal alpha system is quite reactive. What does it do? Third, distal alpha structures I want to discuss. And then fourth, the distal alpha function. Uh, fifth, reasons to operate in glaucoma early. And finally, I want to close with a predictive test of outflow function. What is the location of primary resistance? We thought for a long time that it is the trabecular meshwork. And one of the um, examples I like to use with my patients is a strainer that has a blocked um, that is blocked in a sink, and the water is overflowing and the pressure is rising. That seems to be true for many surgeries we do. Here you can see the epinternal trabeculectomy um, done with the trabectone. In the upper left portion, pre-ablation and post-ablation, electron microscopy, and histologically, the trabecular meshwork is removed. The pressure here in a study lasting five years um, out of Pittsburgh, where I was for six years and a half, um, shows that the pressure drops quite nicely from uh, 20 to uh, just around 14. In fact, as we remove the trabecular meshwork in more diseased eyes, as you can see here uh, labeled 4, the pressure reduction is higher than it is in eyes with early glaucoma or just with ocular hypertension. In those eyes, the pressure drop is not as marked. Independent of the preoperative pressure, this is true if one computes the severity of glaucoma. Um, also, when you remove the trabecular meshwork in an eye that has had a trabeculectomy and has failed a traditional trabeculectomy, you can still achieve a pretty significant pressure reduction um, after just a trabectome shown on the left in um, 85 eyes out of Pittsburgh, um, and also with a combined procedure where you remove the cataract uh, and also perform a trabectome. Also there, you do get a significant reduction of pressure, suggesting that these outflow vessels are still patent and functioning. As far as the angle depth is concerned, the eyes with a wide open angle, larger than Sheffer grade three, they have a nice pressure reduction, but eyes with a smaller angle, with a more narrow angle, including some that had uh, Sheffer grade one, uh, there were 10 of those, you do get a indistinguishable pressure reduction in eyes that only have trabectome surgery. There is literally no difference um, to combining this with phacal emulsification. This is surprising because uh, naturally you would think removing the cataract in those eyes with a narrow angle would deepen the angle and improve outflow. Well, this study shows that this is not the case and the number of our patients here was quite so, um, sufficient to be convincing. But the proximal distal alpha system is reactive. We know that when one implants an eye stand, at around six months, there is an increase of pressure again. While with trabectome surgery, the pressure remains at a somewhat uh, similar plateau. Not only that, but also the medications went up in our study of ISTEP patients just at around six months while they plateaued in um, trabectome patients, shown here as a red line. This holds true also for the ISTEP inject. Uh, here, this is unfortunately the red line. This is now the ISTEP 2. You see an increase in pressure again at around six months while the trabectome as we have seen before, remains at a plateau of around 14. The medications here also seem to rebound just a little bit, uh, but they don't rise as much as in the other study, while the medications in trabectome could be reduced even further. 
Why is this so? Well, there are several studies that show that there is fibrosis that builds up around these micro shunts um, or that they compress um, other uh, collector channels in their vicinity. In addition to the fibrosis, there is also an issue with a biofilm that can build up in these implants and to obstruct the flow over time. This seems to happen just around six months when this explant was obtained. So let's look again at the electron microscopy of the outer wall. We're now sitting in the eye, looking out towards, towards the outer wall with a meshwork removed here. You can not make out all orifices of the collector channels just so easily, but they're here and uh, they're open. They are sometimes held open with hinges, something that not many people are aware of. As it turns out, uh, I've shown you nice data, but if you take a careful look at the raw pressure just after surgery within the first month, just before the glaucoma medications are resumed, you can see that there is a correlation between the height of the preoperative pressure and the postoperative pressure. You would expect, according to the Goldman equation, that if you remove the meshwork, you would achieve a pressure that's equal to the episclerar venous pressure of seven millimeter mercury, um, but you don't. In fact, only one patient here achieved a pressure of uh, just around this level out of 300. This is remarkable. This means that Somewhere downstream of a meshwork, there has to be an outflow resistance that increases as the uh, resistance to outflow has increased. So patients with a bad glaucoma situation here with a high preoperative pressure also end up with a, with a worse pressure just after the surgery. Why is that? We remove it and we do not obtain the episclerar venous pressure. Well, it has to be an obstruction uh, somewhere distal from our uh, strainer tissue. So that's a nice way of explaining to your patients if uh, trabectome surgery, a cahook surgery, or a trabecular meshwork disruptive uh, surgery does not work. But where is this? We, we simply don't know. Um, it's embarrassing because interventional cardiologists, they know where the, um, where the blockage is. And in, into this blockage, um, a shunt is inserted and spreads the uh, coronary artery vessels wide open. But we do this basically with the eyes shut. We, it's a shot in the dark, quite literally. Um, so what are the distal outflow structures? Where could this resistance reside? As you know, the sclera is white, which means it scatters light. That's because the collagen fibers are not in a high order uh, as they are in the cornea. So we developed a clearing protocol to make human eyes and porcine eyes, pig eyes, completely transparent. Yeah, this is the same eye now cleared. The sclera is completely transparent, and that allows you now to look into the sclera to see things you haven't seen before. Here is a pig eye, and this is the trabecular meshwork, this yellow uh, line here. You can make out a really complex network of um, collector channels that most people had never heard of uh, and cannot really be seen histologically because this is a very a tiny structure. This is only visible with uh, ribbon scanning confocal microscopy that allows you to look down to the level of um, nanometers within a cell. Um, so we obtained per eye around 4.5 million confocal images using this clearing technique in the pig eye, in the human eyes, and discovered these complex collector channels. They're quite different in human eyes. Here is an eye number one. You can see that in the different quadrants, superior nasal, superior temporal, infratemporal, infranasal, you can you have large collector channels that are complex and contorted, but they're fairly large. At the same scale, you can see in the other eye here that in this eye, they're tiny. And they're also convoluted and complex, but they look completely different from this eye. Neither eye had glaucoma. Um, not only that, the more distal you look, 
the more oval these vessels become. And that could mean that they're more collapsible at their distal end, which might be a desirable feature, sort of acting like an outflow valve that maintains a certain pressure. So what is the distal outflow function? How can we examine that? We developed um, a canalogram using fluorescent dye. This is a pig eye looking into a camera. A fluorescine is infused before surgery of the nasal circumference. Here, the nasal circumference underwent of the same eye underwent trabectome ablation. And you see that there is a much earlier filling uh, compared to the eye above. And this is the same timing. And not only that, but there is also a distal filling of the outflow, although you would think that it has to end here. You can compute the flow rate, and basically this is uh, increased 360 degrees after a nasal ablation. This is different after the eye stand. It's a focal opening and only enhances focally, as you would expect. But here you have flow beyond the ablation ends. This is a human eye now imaged with SD OCT with the white sclera subtracted away, work out of Pittsburgh from our glaucoma imaging group, um, and different devices. The trabectum you will recognize uh, in, in Switzerland, you also have this endoscopic laser to ablate the meshwork, um, and there are various different stents. Um, if you have just one stent, um, you get access to only one clock hour due to the septations within the human Schlems canal. These are not scanning artifacts, they're true septations. We use then uh, a research SDOCT to observe the vessel changes in a living eye. And these are the red structures. We assembled them three dimensionally. And looked how we could dilate them with nitric oxide, a potent vasodilator. Um, after meshwork removal, in these porcine eyes, we saw that there is a fairly significant pressure drop, although the meshwork is removed. This means that these distal alpha structures do um, enable, uh, do provide an alpha resistance and do enable an additional pressure drop. When we looked at what Parts of these vessels might be changing the most. We saw that there were almost pinch point like uh, bottlenecks that seem to regulate the flow. And there are anatomic correlates in histology. There are, in fact, ring shaped little muscles around these vessels. We also used the tarsidyl aerokinase inhibitors and found that this too is dilating the vessels. Um, up to 180 hours. So this, the different colors here mean that the vessels become bigger, bigger, bigger up to three hours after dosing. Interestingly, there is a pressure drop also with the meshwork and without the meshwork, um, fairly significant pressure drop. Again, indicating that these distal outflow vessels are in charge of a flow regulation that has a real clinical impact. You can lower pressure more. Our final step, and this is uh, not published yet in the form of a paper, but I'm comfortable sharing this already with you. You're the first group to see it. Uh, we also tested VEGF-C and VEGF-A potent um, vaso uh, generators that basically grow vessels. And VEGF-C is a growth stimulant for lymphatic vessels. It is now known um, as of a couple of years ago that the Schlems Canal and the proximal outflow system is, um, has strong lymphatic markers. And so what we see here is they do dilate when you give these two uh, angiogenic factors. Um, also, the volume increases quite dramatically with a consecutive pressure drop and outflow resistance drop. Now, where exactly could this be? Could this explain why our glaucoma patients do not go down to a pressure of eight? We think, yes, one can use computational fluidics using our OCT data, and you can make out bottlenecks um, that we had already seen in the other OCT, but you can simulate whether this actually would allow the pressure to be increased to the level we saw. Um, I want to close with thoughts while we uh, ought to operate early in glaucoma. We know that there is a level of disability 
in the life of a glaucoma patient that is just devastating. And um, not too many years ago, we used to recommend a trabeculectomy, but did so late in the career of a glaucoma patient because they're very risky procedures. One should really intervene earlier to avoid this progressive trajectory, downward trajectory, this fast progression that sets in. This is not just a, a model here, um, a theoretical model by Caprioli. Um, our group in Pittsburgh um, developed a broken stick uh, fit curve that shows that there is really um, such a point where there is a rapid inflection and downward spiral where the visual field deteriorates much faster, although the rate of retinal nerve fiber layer remains the same. So one could perhaps use a benign procedure like the trabectome early on in this course to prevent this rapid decline. Or if you have to act a little later on, you shouldn't wait um, until you would have waited with trabeculectomy. These are pressure flow results. We see that the pressure results um, are just as good as with trabeculectomy, around 12 millimeters, out to 270 days here only in our study. But a phenomenal pressure drop and only 2% um, uh, complications compared to around 40 in the TVT study where trabeculectomies were uh, looked pretty bad. <clears throat> okay, so one would have to intervene with the trabectum early and with the um, uh, pressure flow or something similar perhaps here to avoid the late intervention with the trabeculectomy that only gives a few, um, only gives a little. Um, outlook, a predictive test of outflow function. So I told you about these two things, but how do you decide what to do other than just the stage of the glaucoma? We um, have just uh, in press a paper that shows that you could use YAG goniopuncture of the trabecular meshwork to test this clinically before you take someone to the OR. You shoot a little hole in the trabecular meshwork. You do see a pressure reduction that is predictive of a positive outcome with ab internal trabeculectomy with the trabectome. And the curve here doesn't look so bad. This is a reasonable test uh, and I encourage you to try this in your patients. In summary, we talked about the location of primary resistance to outflow. We thought it is proximal only in the trabecular meshwork, but after doing so much um, trabecular meshwork surgeries, we now know it is really um, further downstream. And we've also learned that the proximal um, part of the distal outflow system is reactive. Think of these eye stents. Um, the distal outflow structures I showed you are much more complex than previously thought. The distal outflow function is real. You can get significant pressure drops of at least 30% giving vasodilators. There are reasons to operate in glaucoma early, and I suggested that early means um, not taking big risks and going for a milder drop, for instance, with the trabectome. And perhaps you can use vasodilators to get down much further with the pressure. We have to try that clinically. Later on in the career, I recommended doing something like a pressure flow. Um, that is not quite as dangerous as uh, trabeculectomy. And finally, I showed you a predictive test of outflow function in the form of a goniopuncture that can predict in your patients um, whether your ab internal trabeculectomy, your trabectome surgery, is successful or whether you should go straight for pressure flow. With that, I want to thank you and uh, I wish you much success with the rest of your meeting.